Are we living in a simulation? People often say things like this, that we're living in a simulation. I'm not sure how seriously they mean it, or indeed whether they actually know what it means or would mean if it were true. Most of us have probably seen one or more of the Matrix movies, and that may be what most people think of when they think of a simulation. Some kind of probably computer generated, well artificially generated anyway, pseudo reality. The idea is pretty common in science fiction. It appears in the Star Trek franchise from time to time, more recently in the Westworld franchise, and, and that Amazon Prime show called Upload. The suggestion is that in some way this world in which we live is not real, or at least not real in the sense that we usually mean that term. There are several things I want to discuss in connection with this idea of simulation. And I will conclude by saying that, yes, we do indeed live in a simulation, although probably not in the way that most people mean. The first thing to say about this idea of simulation is this. Simulation implies that something is being simulated. This means that there is indeed a real world of some kind of which this is presumably a simulation. It could be that this simulation is taking place in a world pretty much the same as this one. Or perhaps it's taking place in a far distant future, and this is a simulation of the creator's distant past. Or perhaps it's a variation in some way of a world that actually exists in which, say, history has been tweaked. What would happen if? Or maybe even some of the fundamental laws of nature have been tweaked. What would happen if? All of this implies that there is indeed some real world out there with real intelligent beings who have created this version of reality. Granted, they might now be extinct and this might all be running on automatic, but at some point there were intelligent beings who created this. It seems to me then, first of all, that this idea is a variant of the intelligent design argument, though we may not refer to the creators as God. It might seem like a good way to explain things like suffering. There are glitches in the program, or even to explain miracles. Perhaps, perhaps these are interventions in the programming or data input of some kind. Maybe the program is sufficiently advanced to self-correct to some extent. Things such as suffering might even be dialed up or down to carry out various experiments. If we were running this simulation, we wouldn't hesitate to do that, would we? Because, of course, if we were them, we wouldn't think of us as real, would we? Is there any reason to think that we might actually be in a simulation, though? The philosopher Nick Bostrom, in his 2003 book, Are You Living in a Computer Simulation?, argues as follows. Many works of science fiction, as well as some forecasts by serious technologists and futurologists, predict that enormous amounts of computing power will be available in the future. Let us suppose for a moment that these predictions are correct. One thing that later generations might do with their super powerful computers is run detailed simulations of their forebears or of people like their forebears. Because their computers would be so powerful, they could run a great many such simulations. Suppose that these simulated people are conscious as they would be if the simulations were sufficiently fine-grained and if a certain quite widely accepted position in the philosophy of mind is correct. Then it could be the case that the vast majority of minds like ours do not belong to the original race, but rather to people simulated by the advanced descendants of an original race. From this he concludes, it is then possible to argue that, if this were the case, we would be rational to think that we are likely among the simulated minds rather than among the original biological ones. Therefore, if we don't think that we are currently living in a computer simulation, we're not entitled to believe that we will have descendants who will run lots of such simulations of their forebears. The argument seems to go like this, I think. If we assume that there is a real world in which such simulations can be constructed and run, or even several such realities, then it's also reasonable to assume that each would be running many such simulations. 
There are, therefore, always going to be more simulated worlds than there are actual worlds. Because there are more, perhaps many more, simulated realities than real realities, the chances are that we're in one of those simulations, rather than one of the real ones. It's even more likely if, say, some of those simulations are themselves running simulations down a level, so to speak, or several levels. So the odds would be that we're in a simulation. I'm not really sure how you would go about testing such a hypothesis, but a paper in 2017 did suggest some ways of possibly testing it and, and made some predictions and proposed some experiments for that. This delves into gaming software and also into quantum mechanics, which after all, as far as we know, represents the basic foundation of this reality, real or simulated. Just as a quick aside, the simulation idea would seem to solve the problem in quantum mechanics of things like quantum entanglement and spooky action at a distance. There's no distance in the simulation, and there's no reason why two distinct actions can't occur simultaneously and seemingly in a correlated way. Note, though, that this would not help in the real world out there, unless the real world is not, in fact, based on quantum mechanics. But where would that leave or lead us? Hmm. Anyway, it seems to me that the authors of this paper start from the idea of a simulation as we might actually run one, as in virtual reality programs and games, for example. They identify the limits of those systems and then note that these limitations lead to conflicts and inconsistencies that seem equivalent to what we see in the quantum world, things such as wave-particle duality. Note also that this simulated reality only becomes real to us, the characters in the simulation, when we observe it. Anything outside our field of vision is there potentially, but remains unrealized until we observe it. Clearly, this reduces the amount of computing power required to run this simulation. And this seems to be equivalent to the van neumann wigner interpretation of quantum mechanics, which requires a conscious observer to collapse the wave function. Without going into detail, the authors of this paper proposed actual and thought experiments that would basically force the simulation to demonstrate certain glitches. I'm not really in a position to say whether their approach holds up under scrutiny, and as far as I'm aware, their experimental challenge has not yet been taken up. I don't know about you, but if it turns out that I'm not real, I'll be kind of pissed off. Unless there's a real me plugged into this reality and operating my avatar, then I guess it depends on what that person's real world and life are like. Or maybe it just raises the question again, what is real anyway? Before I finish up here though, I want to propose another sense in which I think this reality actually is a simulation. We receive a great deal of sensory input, visual, auditory, tactile, olfactory, etc. We also sense our own bodies internally. Let's just consider one of those sensory inputs, sight. Out there in the real world, there are photons flying about and bouncing off things. Some of these photons enter our light detectors, our eyes. They impact on our retinas, which then transmit electrical impulses to our visual cortex. Our brain then organises these impulses into the images that we perceive. I see what my brain interprets as a screen in front of me, etc. It's clear that our brain struggles with new objects that it hasn't encountered before. It's also clear that our mind can be fooled by what it expects to see. Consider this image, for example. To our eyes, square B looks lighter than square A, but it isn't. They're actually the same shade of grey, as you can see in this second image. But, given that square B is in shadow, or appears to be in shadow, the mind thinks it must be lighter, because that's what it expects to see. Our mind has some kind of internal construct that it's built from this visual input, and which it adjusts as it receives new input. Now, it's fairly clear to me that what I actually experience of the world is this construct, a simulation of the world based on this input and the brain's organising power. It's not the actual world out there. I would argue that this is the same for the other senses. So, 
I live in a simulation of the real world out there that my brain creates in here. It's certainly correlated with the world out there, but it isn't that world. This simulation works pretty well as a tool for navigating this reality until, from time to time, it doesn't.